a bit of a programming video. So occasionally you'll hear people talk about whether using to-do statements within your source code or whether using an issue tracker are better. So today we're going to address that. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I aim for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the reason I decided to do this video now is because I came across this on Reddit a little while ago. So this is a graph that shows the number of times that the word to do, hack, workaround and fix me appear within the Linux kernel source code. So for the word, what was it, to do, that's the one that's highest right now. So that's at about six and a half thousand. You have fix me that's about 4,200. And then for the other two, so we've got workaround, which isn't really the same thing, at 2400 and hack, which is at 1500. So those might seem like a lot, but when you look at the size of the actual Linux kernel, it's actually a very small amount. So I think there's about, according to this article here, there's about 28 million lines in the Linux kernel source code. So I'm not saying that this is a lot. The reason that I'm bringing this up in the first place is just because it got me thinking. When should you be using issue tracker and when should you just be using to do statements within your source code? So I know that the Linux kernel does use an issue tracker. So it's not like everyone's just doing everything within the source code, but there's clearly times when people decide maybe it's better to use the source code here. Maybe it's better to use the issue tracker here. So today we're going to actually look at that. So one thing I do want to get out of the way first up is that this isn't a zero sum game. So you don't have to just use an issue tracker. You don't have to just use to-do statements and there can be overlap between them. It's not just something you have to decide on and only use that. You can swap between the two and do a bunch of different things like that. So that's one thing I did want to get out of the way just so people don't start arguing in the comment section. So let's actually get into some of these arguments. So for once, I actually do have notes because I actually wanted to do this video properly, but they're not like complicated notes or anything. So one of the reasons you'd want to use a to-do statement is that it stays with the source code. So what I mean by this is that when you put something in an issue tracker, that issue tracker may change at some point. You may say migrate to a different issue tracker, but if you, everything's just within your source code or you have some things within your source code, it's always going to be within the source code. So if someone else looks at that code, they can be like, oh, here's an issue that's there this is where that it should be fixed or various other things like that. And one of the things that comes along with that, as I said, is that the to-do statements, typically the way that I handle them and the way that most people handle them is that they'll put them where the error is appearing. Some people will put them at the top, but that's far less useful. The way that most people will do it is they'll put the to-do statement, say you have a broken loop or something, they'll put the to-do statements above the loop or in the loop saying, fix this, blah, 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 blah. And one of the benefits of that is that when people are just scrolling through your code, they can see, oh, there's a problem right here. Rather than looking at the issue tracker and then trying to work out what file that actually references and where that fix needs to actually happen, when the to-do statements are within the source code, you know exactly where that change needs to happen. Even if it's not the correct place, you have a rough estimation, especially if you're coming from looking at someone else's source code or you've come back to this source code after a while, you've got an idea of the thought process of the developer while they were working on that part. They're like, okay, this is where I think the problem is. Even if the problem isn't in that place, you can then take that and be like, okay, so they thought it was in this place, but it was actually in this place. How did you get from there to there? And it kind of just helps with the thought process of trying to work out where these problems actually exist. So one of the other benefits of using to-do statements is that they're not just stuck within the source code. I know that I said to-dos are contained within the source code, but that doesn't mean you can't just write a script to then do something like parse the source code and then extract them out and then dump those into an issue tracker. So one of the benefits of doing that is that then like with some of the scripts that I've shown before, you're not directly attached to one piece of software. So an example of this is with my bookmark script that I'm using for my browser. So because my bookmarks are detached from my actual browser, I can jump between different browsers without actually worrying about anything. And if you do the same thing with your source code issues, then you can actually move between different issue trackers without having to worry about migrating the actual issue tracker 
data and actually then just move them around much easier. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend jumping between issue trackers a lot because that's just a lot of unneeded work, but there might be some reason why you have to actually do that. Maybe you have some change in leadership or various other reasons why you would have to change the software stack that you're working with. And the last thing that I've got down here for why to do's are just better sometimes, I'm not gonna say they are better all the time, is because they typically have a much simpler form to write out. So with an issue tracker, you're typically gonna have to do something much more formal or at least fill out a lot more information to explain what the issue is. And that's because unlike with a to-do, where you have the context of where that issue is actually taking place, with an issue tracker, you don't have that same level of context. You have to actually explain the context to someone who's actually looking at that issue tracker. But that's not to say that doing everything with to-dos is the best way to do it. So now I'm gonna actually explain why issue trackers might be a better alternative. So one of the benefits of using an issue tracker is that all of your source code issues are then contained within one easy to find location. So you lose the context that you get with using to-dos where you have the context of the actual source code surrounding it, but it's much easier to actually show not just a new developer, but someone who's outside of the team what the current issues and what the current improvements need to make to the source code are. So rather than having to dig through the source code or parse the source code to actually extract out the issues, you can just look at one simple location. Typically, a lot of the issue trackers will have nice GUI interfaces where you can sort stuff by date and various other sorting mechanisms. So you can easily find everything that needs to be done and everything that needs to basically just be fixed. And along with this, it's much easier to maintain a list of source code issues if you only have one place to look for them. Plus, because you're using a integrated solution or not an integrated solution, that's probably the best term for it. A solution where that's designed to actually track source code issues. They'll typically have tools that'll make it easy to do, say, mass tagging, or say you want to flag a bunch of things as out of date, or you want to do commenting on stuff. That's one of the things you can't really easily do with to-dos without making it very confusing. So one of the problems you have with to-dos is you can't have people commenting on whether this is something that should actually be fixed. Whereas if you use an issue tracker, you can actually get a discussion going without having to go to some third party discussion app because obviously you could use whatever it is you wanna use IRC, Discord, Slack, whatever chat mechanism you wanna to use to discuss the issues within your source code. But one of the benefits of using an issue tracker is that you can actually keep the issues and all the comments related to those issues within the same location without having to do a bunch of extra work. And along with this, you also have the ability of external users to report issues about your code. So with an open source or various other projects like that where the source code is available to the public, it's not much of an issue for people to see the source code. So if you're doing something like, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you're doing the Linux kernel or you're working on some random open source app, then it's not a problem for people to see the source code. And if people want to dig through it to look for the to-dos in there, that's fine. If they want to dig through the actual source code to look at maybe this loop structure is broken, they can do that. But what about for proprietary software projects, things that are closed source? So say the, I don't know, just some random Windows app. Typically, the source code for that isn't going to be available. So if you're using to-dos, you can't have external users actually report issues with your source code. Whereas with an issue tracker, people who have absolutely no knowledge of coding can actually say, here's a problem that I'm experiencing with this. So even with open source projects, this is a benefit. So say for something like Caden Live. So I've been experiencing some random issues where I'm trying to cut something and a cut happens way earlier in the clip or way later in the clip. And I could go through the source code and say, okay, here's where this is happening, but it's much easier for someone who's not really experience with that code base to just go to the issue tracker they're using and say, here is the bug that I'm having, here's the situation that'll reproduce it, and basically, and let the developers work out, okay, here's how we're gonna go about doing this. If we need to use any to-dos to mention where something needs to be fixed, then we can do that then, rather than having to make your users worry about doing that. So by having your code issues tracked outside of your source code with an issue tracker, one of the benefits you get is that when you do something like merge a change within Git. Typically what you'll do is you'll reference the issue that you're trying to fix. 
So what will happen when you just use a to-do is you'll typically remove that once you've actually fixed the issue. So there's no reference of that change ever having been made. Obviously it'll be within Git and you'll have that merge for it, but because that issue no longer remains within the source code, you can't then look back without jumping back to the merge that it happened and actually see exactly what changes were made. But if you're fixing issues from an issue tracker within your Git commits, what you'll then have is a log of when those dates happened, what exactly was fixed, did this commit fix multiple issues? Did it fix one? Did it partially fix one? You'll have an idea of exactly how much of these issues were fixed and when they were fixed and who fixed them. So you actually have a log of all this stuff. But when you're just using a to-do, you don't have all of these extra facilities. So it may not be something that's important on a small project, but when you're working on something as large as the Linux kernel or say Caden Live or just any big project, you typically want to have a log of when stuff happened has this entire thing been completed? Who completed this? And other various logging mechanisms like that. So because of all the reasons that I've listed here, as well as some ones that I'm not gonna cover, a lot of companies will enforce the use of issue trackers. So what I mean by this is that you can happily use to-dos while you're writing the source code. But when you wanna merge into the main repo, you have to actually fix all of those to-dos or move them into issues that are contained within the issue tracker. So typically you're not gonna do something like this on a small project, but I can absolutely see the reason why a company would wanna do this on a big project, It, especially with all the benefits you do get from an issue tracker. So if you've watched this far, you probably want an answer for whether you should or should not use to-dos or issue trackers, and I'm not gonna make that argument. So it's going to very much depend on the exact project you're doing, the size of your team, how much you wanna actually commit to actually tracking the issues, whether that's important or not, and various other things like that. For the projects that I've done, so I've only worked by myself or in very small teams for various open source projects or uni projects, I've made use of to-dos, I've made use of issue trackers, I don't really have a preference for one or the other. Typically, if you do use an issue tracker though, it's going to keep people far more accountable for what they're doing. If you just use to-dos, especially when it comes to uni projects at least, you're gonna have people that slack off because you don't really have a proper way of keeping them in line. And I know there are going to be people in a professional setting that act like that as well. So that might also be one of the benefits of using an issue tracker. It will keep people far more accountable for the work they're actually getting done. And you can actually then follow up with them and say, okay, why isn't this done by this date? This should be done by this date. What are you doing here? But with to do is you also get the benefit of then just being able to quickly jot stuff down and say, okay, here's a fix here, here's a fix here, here's something else you need to do. And typically stuff like that will either work when you're working by yourself or when you're working with a very small group of people who you know are actually good developers or who you know will actually get their work done. So as I said, it's going to very much depend on the sort of project that you're working on. If you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If this video seemed a bit rambly, it's because it was, because I didn't really plan this, as I said. So it's kind of me just putting my thoughts together about whether I think to-dos are better, whether issue trackers are better, and I kind of want to challenge myself with these sorts of videos, where I'm sort of just thinking on the spot and trying to, I guess, really think through these sorts of ideas, where I really stand on them, and I don't know, I guess just... I feel like it's more intellectually challenging than some of the other stuff that I'm doing where I just do software reviews. So hopefully people enjoyed this, but let me know how you feel about that. So if you want to see other videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I aim for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Discord, so if you want to chat with me, that's the best place to go for that. I'm in there most days, so feel free to send me a message or just leave a message in general and I'll get to it at some point. I've also got my library, so if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's the best place to go for that. At least for now, it's the only place. I'll update you guys if I actually do decide to go to another platform. I've been looking at a few, but I haven't decided on what I want to use besides YouTube and library at this point. So... Down below, I've also got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, then go there. I've got a couple of crypto wallets, a PayPal and a Patreon. So feel free to use any of those or just don't, whatever. It's your money. You don't have to support the channel if you don't want to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, down below, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to get video updates, that's the best place to go for that because YouTube can't be trusted to actually push video updates to anyone. So that's probably the best place to go for those. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now. So... I'm out.